Profile. 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 A fact-finding mission on matters of development by the Government Information Service. I felt that we needed to go to these people, these people who have worked uh, to build this country under very difficult circumstances, that somebody needed to say to them, yes, we care. Profile. 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 It has been seven years since the Yes We Care program has been making a difference in the lives of the elderly in Dominica. After giving their best years to build Dominica to what it is today, now in their time of greatest vulnerability, the only thing the country can do to show its appreciation is to take care of them. New people are being added to the Yes We Care program every day. Some pass on peacefully after receiving loving care from the program and as a result we can never record all their stories. As we continue to evaluate the impact of the Yes We Care program, in this third edition of our documentary, we were privileged to speak with some more of our elderly who are part of the program and get some more insight into their contributions and the impact of the program in their lives. Profile. 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 Our journey begins in the south in the heart of an evolving community, Grand Bay District. In a single bedroom, two story home lives a mother and daughter, both part of the Yes We Care program. Hendrina Ogis is a 74 year old mother of two whose age has made it a bit difficult for her to carry out daily tasks on her own. She has lived in her home her entire life. Added to that, her 55-year-old daughter, Mavlin, who is deaf and paralyzed, is also in need of round-the-clock care and attention. The mother can only provide her daughter with companionship. The elder woman has few words to share with us since she seems preoccupied with her own thoughts. She broke away from her thoughts to tell us what her caregiver does for herself and her daughter. Looking about my daughter, she looking about me, she washing clothes for me, she bathing me, she boiling food for me, she boiling food for my daughter. Supervisor of the Grand Bay District, Sylvian Bellot, has been with the program for almost a year. She shares the care that is provided for the mother and daughter. She's a very nice lady. Very respectful, you know, when I come there, I'm, you know, how are you, more bien, you know, and usually my, my um, good morning greetings to them is you, you have breakfast already, you take your medication, how you sleep last night, because that is the first thing you ask them when you, but um, right now, as you can see, my friend is not all well, you know, it's not all well, so that is um, two people that need care, now the son now don't live with them, the son live at the back, but he will come in the morning, fill the bucket of water, put there for them, and make breakfast for them, and then he will go. Then the caregiver take over. Hendrina and Marvelyn's caregiver, Joycelyn Benjamin, has been with the program for six years and has been taking care of mother and daughter since she started. She is only happy to be able to provide care for them under the program as they are also her family. Joycelyn lives at Center in Grand Bay and takes a 30-minute walk to the two on mornings. She explained Marvelyn's current situation. She was sick in her eye. They bulge out and then they admitted her to the hospital. And, and they give her food. She used to sit down by herself. She used to use at the bench to come down from the bed, but since after she came up, she couldn't do anything else. She just cannot move, nothing. And now we have to do everything for her. Change her pamper, they have to bathe her, feed her. She depends on us. Joycelyn visits mother and daughter three days in the week. She has two other clients she visits on two other days. She explained that these are the only clients under her care who have not been abandoned by their family. They get assistance from our family members. Her name is Janet. She, she takes care of them very good. That's the only family I've been working with. Since I've been working with my clients, that's the only family that's taking pulling part. 
in their client life. The people with a good initiative because some of the elderly, it wasn't for yes, we care. They were there a long time already. Profile. 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 Just a 20-minute drive up the steep hills of Tetmon in Grand Bay leaves another client who is also well taken care of by family. Felicity Alexander has lived in her Tetmon home all her life. She lives there alone. Miss Alexander never had children of her own but took in others as her adopted children. The short, plump woman, now 98, finds difficulty moving around, especially most recently. Since then, she has needed a mobility walker to get around her home. Bellas, who is also the supervisor for that area, explained with more detail Miss Alexander's situation. Since after her surgery, she had fallen from her bed and she had a broken hip. So it would not be wise for her alone, you know, and she could not handle everything. So when my care, government caregiver works for the three days, actually she needs somebody else to help her. So in discussion with her family, so I talked to the family, which they agreed to get somebody else to take care of her the days that the government um, caregiver is not working. So they were very pleased of that and they get somebody, paying somebody from Tetmon cell to take care of her, especially on weekends. Miss Alexander's caregiver has been with her for one year. Karen John lives in Montine, a 25 minute walk to Miss Alexander home, a walk she takes three days a week. The caregiver arrives at 7.30 on her visit days and spends the entire day with Miss Alexander. Something I get in right, oh, this morning I have to walk very early, I have to leave my home at 7 to reach here. It's good for me, very good. I like it. Miss Alexander is very comfortable with her caregiver and continuously blesses her while we're there. I do everything, he bathing me, comb my hair, I, he cooking my food. He did, oh, nothing to compare for that lady, my lady. That lady, I still like that lady. When, he, when I see that lady, I hold oh, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Miss Bella described Miss Alexander as an understanding lady who is very easy going with her caregivers. Sometimes when you come, when I come in the morning, I will tell her, morning, in the morning, I'm taking her medication already, having her breakfast already, you know, we, we usually we, we, I talk to them eh, when I, you pray already because you have to make them feel happy. So they tell me, yes, my darling, I, you know, I, I take my medication, I pray, and then we stay there, we talk. But she's a very nice lady. But Miss Alexander's location is a different story. Her home is situated at the end of a narrow grass track that is especially difficult when it rains. Her supervisor describes how the situation is handled when she needs to leave her home. When she has to see doctor, let's call it well, she has to, it's an appointment day, she has to see doctor, and it's a rainy day. My dear, it's not easy. It is not easy at all. Sometimes I slide myself. The, the firemen, they slide they themselves. You know, because the lady is heavy. And they, 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 they usually carry her in a stretcher eh? and take her to the ambulance where the transport and back and take her to the health center. Same thing after doctor see her, that is the same thing we have to do to bring her back up. And sometimes I accompany her, the caregiver, both of us accompanied her to the health center and take her back to her home. In all this, Miss Alexander still remains optimistic. Uh, nothing to complain for the Prime Minister. I'm glad. I still um, pray for the Prime Minister God sent for us. I'm so glad. Every time I pray, I pray for the government. Profile. Profile. Profile.
Our journey continues just a few minutes down the road from Miss Alexander to the home of a 79-year-old man who has a completely different situation. Mr. Oscar John lives alone surrounded by several other houses. A few belonging to relatives, but he has been neglected by all but one. Mr. Oscar has two children and none is not taking care of him. Family member self, the only person I know that will bring in a piece of food for him, bring a piece of food for him is a sister that is living a far distance from him. Mr. Oscar John will have to carry his uh, breakfast every morning as the caregiver was saying if when the caregiver bring today tomorrow i bring mr oscar john is a client of the yes that's just a child of the yes we care program mr john has been part of the program for two years his caregiver gatina francis has been with the program from its inception he didn't have um, care we were looking after him but now with the program, yes, we care. He gets in his daily care. I reach for nine o'clock most times and bathe him, shape him up, wash his clothes. Normally, I bring his breakfast for him, clean his house, clean his yard, talk to him. His caregiver has two other clients who live out of the district. Since she is from Pitit Savan, she also cares for people from her community who live at Bagatelle and Wallhouse. Francis normally takes bus to get to Mr. John and takes a long walk back down to Grand Bay. She occasionally comes into difficulty with family members who don't approve of the Yes We Care program but she does her job out of compassion for her clients. Most of them are less fortunate and most of them have children, but the children neglect them. So the, the, the SUK program brought some joy to some of them lives and some of them have nothing to, haven't got nothing to eat. They would, be, they would be in mess and that program has helped them a lot. This is the kind of compassion that is admired by their supervisor, Sylvian Bellot, who had nothing but praise and respect for her caregivers. My caregivers are very good and hard-working caregivers. Very hard-working caregivers. And uh, something I appreciate with them, they communicate with their supervisor. Because communication is the key of the, of the job. Because if you are not communicating with one another, you know, for example, I'll give you an example. I was on leave last in May, and while I'm on leave, I'm still working. You know, sometimes the client, um, the caregiver will call me, Mrs. Bellot, you know, I'm um, such person, Mr. Oscar, pressure is high, I will, I'll go up to take more. You know, you know, Mr. Oscar don't have pamper, I'll go down in the office and get pamper for him. So we communicate well, very well, and they work so well. They work on time, you know, and uh, I appreciate their work very much. Her caregivers have equal admiration for her as a supervisor. She's a very good supervisor. When she comes and works with us, she will not stand up and look at us. She put her glove, she put her thing, and she helps us with, them, with our clients. She's a, she's a very good supervisor, and I'm very appreciative of her. That lady is a godsend lady. This is a lot, very good lady. I got say nothing for that lady. She's very good and kind. The Yes We Care program is a God sent program. It is a God sent. It is something, I don't know where the Prime Minister, Minister and initiative that program, but my dear, if it wasn't for the Yes We Care program, a lot of our elderly or senior citizens would have died already. Because working with the Yes We Care as a supervisor, oh my God, I don't know what some of our elderly people would do. The daily care, right? You wash, you cook. You do, you do errands, you run errands for them, right? No, you, you, they get a food supply every month. That is, the, that is the important thing. Every month, and the clients receive their food supplies. 
for them to and if it wasn't that my dear I don't know what some of our people want to so this program is a very good and important program for Dominica and I pray that this program continues we leave the district of Grand Bay confident in the determination of the caregivers and assured by the care they extend in that area. Profile. 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 Our journey takes a turn to the southwest near the city. We are now in the Rosu district, which spans from Stock Farm to Maho. In Stock Farm lives Antonia Maximen, known as Lady Maxim, who in her younger days was a Calypsonian. I custom when I go in this stage and make people police, police shift people to see me. I was so fat. When I send my, when I do that, my, my side of my body say good morning. When I do that, my side of my body say good afternoon. When I do that, my side of my belly is coming. When you shift people to see me at that stage when I call DFA DFA. Yes. C'est moi qui te camène les clubs là. Je te aime moi. Mon cas, je vais vous donner. Oui, oui, maman. Oui, oui, maman. Merci à Vini pour vous. Vini, j'ai ma ni coura sous beauté. Mon pani pour le corps. Ma ni coura, j'ai tout. Après, il mange pour le moins. Ni ma ni coura, mange moins. Oui, oui, maman. Oui, oui, maman. After just a short while with her, we discovered that she is a very feisty and outspoken woman, although she has grown frail. Her now small frame almost disappears in clothes that seem a bit big for her, but she proudly wears a matching floral dress and head tie after her caregiver and supervisor were tasked with searching for her desired outfit. She now walks hunched over and must hold on to nearby frames for support, but she is a proud woman and even at 93 years still demands things a certain way and nothing less. This is what her niece who visits from time to time has always admired about her even when she was a small child. God is good and now he always said that if he do his work, then I expect any time that this happen, happen. But for now she is there. And I'm glad for that. And she used to support us before. And I like her for that. She has love. And I like the people that have love. Supervisor of the Rosa North District, Aldermater, looks on at the interaction between Lady Maxim and her caregiver while she shakes her head laughing. She is amused but not surprised as this is usual with the 93 year old. She's a very high spirited client. If you come out of home and you do not get a smile, that means she is very unwell. So she, as you heard, she sang a little calypso today for us and that is her thing. So most of the times I just sit down and have a little rapper with her and listen to her sing. These are the little things that make them happy. She can, you prepare her meal, you put another little table for her and she will, she can feed herself. So the workload is not that heavy. Jeanette Coffey is Lady Maxim's caregiver and she attends to her every day since most times Lady Maxim is home alone. Well, Jeanette, she bathes her, she grooms her, she bathes her, she you know, gives her water, gives her medication, and these are some of the things that we do on a daily basis. We do cleaning, we make sure that the client has a proper meal, we make sure that the, the home is left in a favorable condition. Even when you leave, you make sure that your client is okay. And then we administer prescribed medication. Some of the clients, they cannot take their medication for themselves, so we have to administer the medication. Lady Maxim's son who lives in the countryside visits her regularly and performs tasks around the yard when he can. When we got there, he was busy painting. He was the one who requested assistance for his mother. That was the first time a government ever 
offer something on behalf of the elderly in the country. And then I am very pleased of what the Prime Minister is doing for his people. And then that make me really put my all my love on his behalf as as a supporter of the party also because and the yes uk program is a very good program and then it's not only in the wrong the country they assist the government is assisting elderly and then what he's doing there is no other government i ever do that and then that's why he will live for a long time he will live for a long time and i do believe um this government will have to go anywhere for now because of what they're doing, especially the Yes UK program and the, 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 um, the um, health for the people and all this program, then I'm very pleased of what he's doing. He is grateful for the work which a caregiver does for his mother as he is not able to do so all the time. So what she's doing, she, she's doing her almost best. She, she, I'm, I'm pleased with what she's doing because, um, because it's not she alone that she has to take care of, you know, so the, whatever that she can do, I'm pleased of. Okay. Yes. Alda Maida supervises four caregivers and 19 clients in her district. Her clientele varies as some go on to live with family, some move on to the Dominica infirmary while others pass on. Alda has high praise for her caregivers for their dedication and hard work, sometimes going above and beyond their call of duty. Profile. 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 In the cool hills overlooking Canefield in the community of Cochrane lives another high-spirited elderly lady. After turning onto a rugged dirt road on entering the floral community of Cochrane, home of the Rabbit Festival, a scenic three-minute drive to the little wooden cottage snuggled among trees and shrubs, you will find the home of Monica Toussaint. She is happy to see that both her supervisor and caregiver are here to see her at the same time. It is apparent that they are as dear to her as her own children. When her last caregiver fell ill, a young lady from the National Employment Program was hired to take care of her. I feel good about her. I appreciate what she's doing for me. I am thankful for it. I have a good relationship with them. That's what that one behind there. Yeah, no, come now. <laughs> I love them, my dear. I love them. I appreciate them. And anything you cannot do for yourself and God send a help for you, you have to appreciate it. Don't say that in front of your face and behind your back to say something else. Because I myself, I haven't got nothing saying behind nobody back. They're doing their work. I thank in them. When they finish and they go in, I tell them thank you very much. God bless you. Because if they don't come and do it for me, I cannot do it. I have grandchildren, they work in. I have children. I have how much here? One, two, three, four. The rest of our way. But did have one? Well, I cannot say nothing for her now. I have two of them, I cannot say nothing. Two girls, and the other one, well, she's not able to, I don't worry about that. But the others, I am thankful for them. So I thank in God for everything. NEP caregiver Sharon Michael seems at ease with Miss Tuse, even if she has only been with her on the job for a few weeks. On entering the home and greeting Miss Tuse, you get the sense they are long-time friends. I love taking care of people a lot. I love taking care of them. Especially ageable people, that's my people. I love to take care of them. So, I'm thankful for the job, yes. And I'm enjoying it. I enjoyed it. I am enjoying my job. It hurt my heart sometimes to see children who walk out from their family, especially they're leaving their mother alone. And I wish I could just take all of them because I love taking care of them. I have a grandmother. She's 96 years and I adore that lady. So that's why I love the ageable people. And I'm so happy when I hear about the Yes You Care people. I was amazed when I hear that. 
and I'm so thankful. Person that brought that up, God help them. Mm -hmm. I love it. Sharon usually comes in at 8 to prepare breakfast. She does the laundry, cooks lunch, cleans and combs Miss Tusa's hair. I sometimes I live there, sometimes minutes to five. That's how long I stay there, from eight to minutes to five I live there. You just like to be around me to trouble me. Very far. I want to make sure everything is in order. That's me. I want to make sure everything is in order. So when I, le I live and I go, I know everything is in order. When I come back, I know where, how I live there. I need to see it that way. Sharon comes every Monday and Friday. It's good. I love it. And I appreciate everything they're doing for me. Because God take my tongue and he my, God take my knees and he leave my tongue for me. <laughs> because I the knees have got strength. I have a practice in them. And I cannot open my clothes. I cannot stand up. I cannot sweep my house. I have to take out my broom handle from the sweep my house, but I have to sit down to sweep it. So thanks God. But yes, you care. And I thank the Prime Minister. I thank in them. And I love them for that. Because I would not my all my children. Ogawai, everybody is big people, and is I alone? It is 14 years since I inside my house, I alone. My husband died 14 years back. Such vibrancy was found in these southwestern homes. Profile. 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 Our journey took us to the La Plaine district which spans from the southeastern communities of Rivier Siric to Delisis. On a lonely road somewhere between Rivier Siric and La Plaine in a tiny house nestled on the shoulder of the road is a single resident in her 70s. Ruby Prescott is from the village of Wattenweaven and has lived in Rivier Siric since she got married decades ago. She has lived alone in her cozy corner since her husband died some 13 years ago. Miss Ruby, as her community members know her, tells us how long she has been part of the program and shares some stories about her life before the Yes We Care program. I think since they started, you know, since they started, I am on it until now. So I can let you know in point. It's good. <laughs> It's good. I, I, I like it. I get enough in so far. It gives me a good help. Yes. Her caregiver, Nathalie George, who is also from Rivia Siric, lives nearby and leaves her home at 8.30 every morning to begin the half-hour walk to Miss Ruby's home. Miss Ruby! Oi! Miss Ruby! Oi! How are you today? Hi dear. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How are you today? Hi dear, not bad. Show them a mash, shall we? Show them a mash. No, right, no, Miss Ruby. Mm. <laughs> I know. But what's your night? Oh, praise God for that. Natalie does all of the housekeeping for Miss Ruby, and it was evident when we get there, everything is in its place. I cannot go down in the health center as I want, but um, I ask the nurse to give me the dressing and I do it myself. And then she's sending up the dressing for me. Well, the lady going for the dressing for me and she bringing it for me and I dress in it. She enjoys the company of her caregiver and supervisor since they are her most frequent visitors. Okay. No complain. If I want anything, I call her, whatever, whatever I call her. Whatever she call me and then we correspond. Miss Ruby is a mother of one daughter and one granddaughter. But their busy lives prevent them from visiting often. They don't come up here often because on account of their work and the ride. But we talk every other day, every day, you know, in between. She calls and the times her granddaughter will come up. But her daughter, she has a shop, so that's why she cannot 
I'm up what she wants. Okay. Miss Ruby sits comfortably in her chair with her leg propped up on another chair as she watches her television shows, her main form of entertainment. I used to work different places, but a uh, housemaid, Fort Young, Pastor, Cicero, and um, I worked by that lady, you know, she's Deloney, at Goodwill, I worked by her. Well, there first I worked, rightly speaking, and then from there I worked different places. So I, I didn't mind. Now she remains mostly stationary since she finds it difficult to move around without her cane. Added to that, she has a bad leg that requires dressing daily. For me to move inside there, if I want to try and go outside there, I must have the stick. If I don't have the stick, I cannot move. <laughs> and I have my two knees. I cannot walk on it. If I have to walk, I, have, I must use my two sticks or my stick. But I must have a right to take me wherever, wherever. After cleaning and caring for Miss Ruby's immediate needs, Natalie takes a pail to collect water and to wash Miss Ruby's clothes. She's used to doing things the old-fashioned way and takes another 20-minute walk to the nearest spring to wash and collect water. Ryan Stevenson has been the supervisor for the Lapland district for less than six months. She supervises four caregivers and 14 clients. She visits her clients and caregivers regularly and enjoys engaging them in conversation. The Yesu Care program is a very good program, I must say. The clients continue to thank the Prime Minister for the good work that they do. And they are ever so thankful. Every time I come, they bless the Prime Minister for the good work that he's doing. They're happy. They give their warm welcomes to me. Yeah. Profile. 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 We continue on to the community of La Plaine where a visually impaired man in his 70s lives alone. Mr. Marcel Daru has been part of the Yes We Care program for only six months and he's the one who requested the assistance. My eyes start getting bad, I work pretty close to 40 years now. But it's getting worse every time, every time it's getting worse until now. I can't see faces like almost, almost 100% blind now. But it started uh, quite a while, quite a time, long time ago. And the, the jobs I was getting wasn't, wasn't doing much for me. So the eye keep coming on worse, worse, worse until it reach that stage. When I realized I was, I was jamming, when I walk in, I jamming on the door. I say, oh, that thing, I must look for help. Mm -hmm. So I passed, I was passed by Percy's home when I go in church. So I told her, I need help, what she can do for me. And she said, she would speak to a supervisor. And that's how it started. Evelyn Samuel, who Mr. Daru calls Percy, has been a caregiver with the program since it started in 2009. She has two clients, both of whom are visually impaired. Evelyn, who visits him twice a week, prepares breakfast for him when she comes. She also does some cleaning, washing and ironing, makes his bed and runs errands. On the days when he is alone, he cooks for himself and listens to his radio or his Bible stories that are saved on a device he received from a church friend. Mr. Daru is a very nice person to work with. Um, we eat breakfast together. Well, most of the time I don't stay for lunch if I cook. <laughs> but we eat breakfast together. We have a good relationship. Mr. Daru is fine. And he's very appreciative for what the Yes We Care program is doing for him. Oh, the Yes We Care program is a very good program because it has helped a lot of people. 
because I have met people in a lot of bad conditions. They couldn't get a bath, they couldn't get their hair combed, you know, so it's good. Um, I am just hoping that the program will bring more awareness to people that they would look about their elderly. Don't abandon them. Evelyn is Mr. Daru's most regular visitor. He is visited by his church members from time to time, but most times Mr. Daru is home alone. Oh, I had friends. But I don't drinking, I not smoking. So all them friends they are they're gone. I think the SVK program is a God-given program. It wasn't given just by man, it was given by God. Because I seen he have people maybe in worse condition than me. And it's, it's that program that can help them to at least end their life in a, in a good way, in a better way. Because I know people in worse condition than I am. Although my condition is not so good, but I still believe it have people that worse than me. And that program is, will be very, very good for them, as it is for me. When we begin to leave, Mr. Daru keeps talking to his caregiver, an indication that he doesn't want her to leave so soon. It is evident that he enjoys her company. Profile. 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 Our final stop at Lap Lane takes us to a long, winding and rugged uphill drive. We finally arrive at the home of the second client in Laplin, who is also visually impaired. Clemens Loda is a vibrant and friendly diabetic who is blind. Added to that, she lives with high blood pressure. She lives with her husband and her son. Her son, who works during the day in Roseau, administers her insulin every morning before he leaves for work and every evening when he gets back. Although it may seem like her needs are fully met, the lives of her family are restricted because of her need for constant care and attention. Clemence has been with the program for almost three years. I cannot say nothing but against that government. Because for, uh, the, the help they're giving me, the, it, is, it is very plentiful and enough. Okay? So it, it, does, it does do plenty for me. Because there are times I dare myself alone, especially the, the, the care they're sending for me with that lady there. Even though it's, one, even though it's three times a, a, a week, or a month that she came, but it's a good company for me. I thank God for that, okay? I thank God for, for our Prime Minister Specialist, Roosevelt Scary. Because what he what he's doing for us, there are no government have not do that for us in life. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Her husband, Louis Loda, is a farmer, but he never falters to care for his wife. He is the one who looks after most of her needs and does most of the tasks around the house. When she's hungry, she goes in coma. So I have to be buckled up from you. Sometimes if she did and she's hungry, she, she falls on that step already. She falls on that step already through her hungriness. Anytime up and she don't get something to eat, she, she goes in a coma like she don't know where she be, she doing anything. So. I just be hustled to come back and feed her. Sometimes I just be there and she, she, when I come in the house, I'm meeting her here, so it's plenty of help for me. What can I do? Anything you get from of you are satisfied. <laughs> and say thank you. <laughs> hey, class, it is, what can I say? <laughs> I usually come in the morning because in the morning that's when he, most of the time, I have to go to his garden. I was one asked to go to his garden, so I, or if he have to go to town, so I'll be there in the morning till he come back. Well, if she hasn't taken her bath, I'll help her. But these people wake up early, so you find most of the time when I come, she has already taken her bath. 
and eat her breakfast. So if her husband is not there, then during the morning, you know, give her a snack, give her something to eat if she feels hungry. But he cooks, he does most, he does most of his cooking. I come out here, cut her toenails when it needs to be done, you know, sweep, see, whatever, whatever is there to do, I do. The hope of this caregiver and supervisor is that they will soon have more people who are in need of care under the Yes We Care program. Profile. 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 Our journey ends in the indigenous Kalinago territory in the community of Siniku. Looking on at passers-by and vehicles is the pastime of a partially disabled elderly in his 60s who can only do so much for himself. Cyprian Joseph has only been part of the program for a few months. Supervisor of the Kalinago district is Charlene Thomas. She too has been with the program for a few months, nine to be exact. She seems well acquainted with Joseph as she rearranges his clothes in his bedroom. Mr. Joseph was injured in an accident several years ago but sought help too late. He is unable to walk long distances and has mild Parkinson's disease. He describes what the Yes We Care program means to him. Yeah, I'm glad my man borrowed those. He'll come check me. I'm really glad. Although we did not meet his caregiver, he was eager to tell us about all the help he receives. His people coming around, they walk in, they sweep in, they walk in. During her short stint with the program, Charlene has already developed a great passion for caring for the elderly. Every day I visit a different area and visit different clients every day. On days that I go and visit the clients and the caregiver is not there, I do the job, the same thing that the caregiver does. So then I would wash for the, the clients, I would tidy up the house and do whatever it is necessary that needs to be done. The clients enjoy the company a lot, enjoy my company a lot. I would sit and engage in different conversations, put it into their life and what they did before, and different situations about life and everything in general. They enjoy it so much that at the time when I have to leave, that they ask me if I live in already, when they will see me again, how soon. So I know that they enjoy my company and look forward to seeing me another day. Um, the Yes We Care program, I think, is a godsend program for our country in general. Our elderly and vulnerable of the communities, they receive a lot of help from the program. And most of them, if all of them, are very grateful for the help that they are receiving from the program. It gives me great joy to see the clients always smiling and happy, pleased with the help and care that they're receiving from the program. All of them and all of them and their family are grateful for the government of Dominica and what it is doing for them. Profile. 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 We continued to the neighboring community of Bataka. There we found that blindness is no deterrent for another elderly man who has been with the program since it was launched. Brenville Valman lives with his nephew. Mr. Valman does everything for himself and for his pets. Here is his story. Mr. Valmon, yeah. tell me, tell me what you think about Mrs. Paris and she's coming to help take care of you. So can you see anything, Mr. Balmo? No, no, no. I, 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 I cannot rely on, on myself. I cannot see nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing at all, at all, at all, at all. But you can do everything? Everything, everything. What do you do? Tell me what you do, Mr. Balmo. I print food. I, I, I like fire. I speak in wood. I found bois, I got him a defeat, I got him a defeat, I got him a defeat, I got him a defeat.
Oui, vous êtes très talentueux. Oui, je suis très talentueux. 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 Il n'y a pas fait bon pour moi, il n'y a pas fait bien pour moi. Je n'y a pas fait bien pour moi, il n'y a pas fait bien pour moi. Teresa Paris est son caregiver. Elle a été avec lui depuis 2011. Je me lave pour lui, je me lave, 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 je me lave. Elle est heureuse de le gouvernement aider. Et elle est toujours en parlant avec moi sur son... Um, the supervisor, she's a nice lady. She come here sometimes. If he haven't got meat, he haven't got anything, she go in the shop and she buy a pong of meat. She give it to him. She say, well, Ben, look is what I have. You can cook your little fig today with it. She help him. People around help him too. What they have, they bring for him. The lady you meet there now is his sister. So sometimes she help him. Everybody around help him. So because they know he's blind, he can't do nothing. What they get, a hand or fig they bring for him. Mr. Valman was eager to give us a demonstration of his abilities. We looked on in amazement as he searched for his axe and proceeded to slowly cut away at a dry coconut. He normally does this every day to provide food for his chickens and dogs. Profile. 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 It is very easy to miss the entrance of the home of Mr. Alfonso Paris. The entrance to his yard is a narrow one, with rock steps leading to a noticeably clean and organized yard with a small cottage right in the middle. Mr. Paris has a tiny frame and he sits just as humbly and quiet. He is a father of two boys, one with whom he lives. He shares with us what he did before retiring and joining the Yes We Care program. I work in it for myself and I work in the government road. That I do it. Teresa Paris is also his caregiver. She was responsible for getting him into the program less than six months ago. He was in for me, and what he always bring for me, he was cleaning my house, yes. and get water for me to bathe, yes. His caregiver explains in more detail the sort of help he receives from the Yes We Care program. I do what I can with him. I come, I clean the home. I wash his clothes. If he cannot dress, I help him. But sometimes he dresses himself, but I can't come here every day. My main time, I clean for him on first day. And sometimes, most in the morning, before I go on the other side, I come, I pass, I take care of him, I talk to him. And then I go on the other side and take care of the elderly. And if I have something, I bring for him. But his son, do what he can for him. The son cook for him. Sometimes if I come and I calculate, he mop already. He mop before I come. He do what he can. He wash too sometimes. While she speaks, Mr. Valmond is overcome with emotion and begins crying quietly. His caregiver gently comforts him and explains that he cries sometimes when he thinks about how his life once was. And he's a very nice fellow, a nice man. He's a very nice man. So you can see he, he cry now when he come. I don't know, but... Sometimes I don't know if it's when he think what happened, you know, how he lived in, how his life was before, and how he be now. So he cried, now he's telling him, Papi, you haven't got to cry, why are you crying? What happened? It well happened already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. But I, I do my best with him because I say, like, right now he 
I defended him, but tomorrow we can come worse than him. Yes. So we have to think what we can do for them today. Mm -hmm. The Prime Minister, he doing good for the people. Eh? He, he doing something good for the people. But as he always telling me, sometimes he telling me, well, I praying for the Prime Minister. He's the one that helping us right now. Before he didn't see anybody, but now he have me to do something for him. So praise God. Coordinator of the Yes We Care program, Matilda Roy, shares the evolution of the Yes We Care over the years. When the program started, there were 248 clients and 54 workers, one coordinator, nine supervisors, 43 caregivers, a driver slash handyman, and an administrator. We work from 8 to 4 and on Monday to Friday, we do not work on weekends. So what we would like to see is relatives or children, somebody coming to take the slack on the weekends or so. Some of the clients are in the same vicinity, same neighborhood, and the relatives and particularly the children for so will not lend a hand. And when the caregiver kegi leaves on the Friday afternoon, when they come back on Monday, the same way they met, they left the person that is what, if you can imagine the condition, when they come on a Monday morning, and the children are there. Surprisingly, they are the ones who are supposed to be given to the, to the client or the, the, the parent, and they, they will take. And not only the food, they take the cleaning supplies, cleaning supplies, the pails, the mops, they will take that. When we started this program, some people were so, I really cannot even explain because of politics, they said, oh, they do not want their relatives to be on, they do not want their, and these people need the program, you know, if you see the condition they were in, they didn't want the program because of politics. How can you think of politics for your, the care of your, your, your father? You're getting that for free, and you're, you're supposed to be supplying, providing for your parents, and you're not doing it, and you're refusing, you know? So we had someone, one or two kids, we had some people we had to remove. Because the children threatened the supervisors and caregivers, tell them they don't come to the place. We had to remove them from the program. It's a challenging and fulfilling work, yes, you can. Because it is good to see like pe people who elderly who couldn't do nothing, you see them happy, you know, the latter days, you know, happy and so, so it's really fulfilling. At least, and they continue to give blessings, so. Blessings will pass on. <laughs> if we have learned anything from our journey, is that there is only so much the Yes We Care program can do. The community must get involved. Families must get involved and help where they can. The Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Roosevelt Scarrett has been heard repeatedly calling for families and loved ones to take better care of their seniors. These are people who would have helped build the country, laid the foundation for us. And the question is, why should we be living in, in, in these conditions? Now, there are some who have relatives and, and children, you know, and there are some who do not. And we were thinking of how do we respond to the challenges confronting these people? Should we continue to provide them with some little assistance for the uh, public assistance program, the 150 or the 375 a month? And would that really be um, able to address their issues? Uh, you give them 150 or 375, who's going to bathe them? Who's going to wash their clothes? So we decided to launch a program uh, to bring home care to them. To, because a number of elderly would rather stay in their communities, stay in their homes, um, that they've been living in for the last 87 years. They do not want to leave their homes. So we decided to launch this um, homebound program. And it came to me to call it Yes We Care so that people would be told, the older old folks would be told that, that we do care about them. And we do appreciate what they have done uh, for this country.